Now, let's take a look at divergence. The first thing I'd like to do is show you an example of divergence. We'll define what it is using an example of positive divergence. And then we'll look at the psychology behind it. I want to use this section of the chart on the left-hand side. Let's look at the price first. You can see up in the price chart that the values have dropped. And I'll draw a line from this low to this low. We've had a drop in price on those two price swings. Let's go immediately below it and look at the corresponding MACD values. Now remember this is the difference between the two moving averages. And you can see here that the MACD did not drop below the first low. It's actually moving up as the price is moving down. This is an example of positive divergence. And this will quite often happen right before a stock will start to run back up again, as it did in this case. Remember I said we're going to talk about the psychology of MACD. When I first saw this and divergence was explained to me, I could not understand why MACD could be so predictive of price movement. It really didn't make sense to me at a deep level. I spent quite a time looking at it and I came up with an explanation that works for me and I'll share it with you and you can take it for what it's worth but it certainly has helped me understand and have deeper appreciation for divergence. I explain it this way imagine if you will that you were walking a dog the dog is on a leash and imagine also if you will that it's a rubber leash and the dog can pull on the leash and get farther away from you and you'll feel of course the tension in the leash as he does that. Imagine that you were the green line. You were walking from left to right and the dog being hyper excited and running back and forth on your trail is the red line. Now this is where the psychology comes in. Assume that the dog his mind being very hyperactive and running from one side to the other is like the mind of the masses of traders. You are trying to judge what's going to happen next. Let's say that you are right here and the dog has run down or it would be to your right if you're walking from left to right. This distance away which would be represented by the red line. The MACD value is the tightness of your leash or how far the dog is from you. And we can see that right here from the zero line to here. The dog, of course, loses interest in the right side of the trail very quickly, comes back towards the center, and then turns and runs again to the right, pulling you ever so slightly in his direction. This time, however, an interesting thing happens. Even though the dog runs further to the right, he's not as far away from you are, and the leash is not as tight, represented by the distance from you, the green line, to the dog, the red line, or from the zero line on the MACD to here. In other words, the dog is losing interest in that side of the trail. He has not run as far. You can't see that on price chart, but you can definitely see it in the difference of the two moving averages or the MACD. And this is a clear indication that the dog very likely may run to the other side of the trail, which he did in this case. Let's look at some other examples. There's a very good example up here in this topping pattern. Again, you are the green line, the dog is the red line, and you can see that he's running to what would be your left now and pulling the leash very, very taut right here. And if I draw that straight down, you can see that uh, on the MACD chart, it would be from here to here. That is a measure of the tightness of the leash. The dog pulls back a little bit and runs again to the left. Okay. And you can see that the dog is still very, very interested in the left side of the trail. And you can expect that he will continue up the left side of the trail. He pulls back again a little farther this time and runs again. And this time he gets all the way to here. But note something. 
He didn't get very far from you this time. The leash is not nearly as tight as it was. That's the distance from here to here. And note the MACD divergence that was set up here. The price has actually gone up from here to here. And the MACD value has gone down. This is a clear indication that the run is about over with. In our example of the man walking the dog, the dog comes all the way back, runs again to the left side of the trail. This time he's almost completely lost interest in the trail. The leash from here to here is gone nearly completely slack and you can expect a run to the opposite side. And of course that's exactly what happened here. You can see here now the dog of course is over on the other side of the trail and right here you can see he's starting to lose interest again. If I draw the vertical lines through here you can see the difference, the distance from you to the dog is stretched out in this case and in his next run down which goes to an equal level in price the leash has gotten completely slack and I would expect a rally in this stock to occur right here also because it's happening on a support line this is what I'm looking for I'm looking for a significant MACD divergence at a logical turning point which would be a, of course a support line I'd like to conclude this video lesson by saying that I have found trading MACD divergences at logical turning points on stocks to be a very profitable trading system. It's taken me a long time to get to this point and I hope this video will show you what can be done. There are several reasons why this works. Number one is that the divergences are truly a leading indicator and it'll give you a chance to get into a trade before the move has occurred. Also equally important is the fact that I use trend lines to enter the trades in combination with MACD divergence. This is extremely important because I use the trend line as a stop. Not all of these trades work of course this is a stock market and only a good percentage of them will run. The trick seems to be to buy into the stock near the support line. If the stock closes below the support line in the case of a long trade, exit the trade the next day or on the next bar at least. Never get caught in a trade closing below the, the support line on a second bar. That's an ironclad rule and it will keep you from losing a lot of money. Also be sure that there's a significant distance that the stock can run. We're going to play here a risk reward ratio. We want the stock to have a significant distance to run and a very short distance to fall if for instance you have to get out. Of course we have this case right here the loss would be very small and the potential gain is very great. I like to see about a 4 to 1 ratio in the trades that I do. In the next video we'll look at the method that I have found and I use to select these trades. I use the RAMP program to find them. The MACD value is right in the RAMP program. Actually they're very easy to find but I have a method I use that keeps me out of trouble and I will share it with you in the next video. Thank you.